Did you know that the first man in space didn't actually land in the ship? Let's learn more about that today on Space Course. On April 12, 1961, Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first person in space. The rocket carrying Gagarin's Vostok 1 spacecraft launched from Baikonur Cosmodrome at 6.07 a.m. Reaching unprecedented speeds for manned travel, the spacecraft broke free of Earth's gravitational pull and entered orbit around the planet, circling once before re-entering the atmosphere and landing safely back on Soviet soil. Or so we thought. We'll get back to that in a minute. Before Gagarin was able to launch, it was discovered there was a problem with the seal which should make it airtight. Engineers spent almost an hour removing the screws, adjusting the sensors before the hatch was closed again. During this time, as Gagarin was waiting to be shot into space on top of his missile, his heart rate was a normal at rest 64 beats per minute. Let's look at some of the unprecedented stats before getting into the interesting stuff. The total mission lasted only 108 minutes, and the trip around Earth at 17,500 miles per hour took less than an hour and a half. In that time, Vostok 1 completed one not-quite-circular orbit at a maximum altitude of 203 miles before slowing down to the point that the capsule was pulled back into the atmosphere for ballistic re-entry. Now to the cool stuff. At no time was control handled by Gagarin himself. It was controlled from the ground, thinking that the weightlessness of space would not allow Gagarin the control needed. However, on board in a sealed envelope was the combination code to unlock the controls in case of an emergency. I assume something along the lines of contra codes, although this was not used by Gagarin. Another precaution taken by the Soviets was to have enough supplies for 10 days spaceflight on board in case the retro rocket failed to fire. Vostok spacecraft were designed to naturally re-enter the Earth's atmosphere after 10 days. The Vostok 1 was a spherical cap designed to eliminate changes in the center of gravity, and that way the craft could assure comfort for its one-man crew no matter what orientation it's in. What it wasn't designed to do was land with a human still on board. Unlike later Russian space vehicles such as the modern Soyuz capsule, Vostok 1 was not outfitted with thrusters to help slow it down as it headed back towards Earth. So Gagarin had to eject before reaching ground at an altitude of around 4 miles. But since the achievement would not have been regarded as the first successful manned mission to space unless it included a manned landing, the Soviet Soviets kept this little detail out of official press releases. The landing site of Vostok 1 is now a monument park. The central feature of the park is a 25 meter tall monument. In front of this is a 3 meter statue to Yuri Gagarin, wearing a spacesuit, one arm raised in greeting, the other holding his space helmet. Historian Asif Azim Siddiqui put it the best by saying the success of Vostok 1 will undoubtedly remain one of the major milestones in not only history of space exploration, but also the history of human race itself. In just 108 minutes, Gagarin went from an unknown to human hero of Soviet Union. Gagarin was the first human to see our planet from space, and the excitement that made its way around the world launched Gagarin into celebrity status and toured the world. Although the Vostok 1 was not the first mission into space, it being the first manned mission into space did set the USSR on top of the space race temporarily. Thank you so much guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video on the Vostok 1 and Yuri Gagarin. Uh, I hope to bring many more of these cool videos to you guys, especially about the USSR and a little bit of their unknown spacecrafts and, and some of their missions, um, especially about Titov and some of the original Soyuz. But if you guys enjoyed this, click the like button, subscribe for more, and uh, thanks for watching.